One of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves is, who are we? In fact, that's, I think, one of the questions that, since we were kids, there was this pondering on who are we, and we were presented even in school that these were one of the most uh, significant questions about existential philosophy, where we are trying to answer who we are. And this is obviously not a question that we, um, we have gotten an answer to because the reason why we can't really define who we are is because we are everything. And to try to put a label on everything is to separate it from something else that doesn't exist. I know this sounds bizarre, and it's supposed to sound like that because it's a paradox. Trying to define yourself as something will never accomplish the idea of it. And the more we try, the further away we get to it. And now, this is a seemingly paradox in our humanity, the way we are, because if you take a step back and you realize that the, the reason why we humans have this capacity of discerning things, to look at anything and create a concept of it, is to simplify the experience of being humans. Let me explain what I mean. It would take forever to describe another human being, for example. It would take forever to describe anything in nature, for that matter. And it's our consensual reality, namely what we, uh, we accept as a, a, a common definition that really creates things in our existence. Now, this is really important because the way we define things actually put a sort of power to it and we start associating the definition of something for what it is as opposed to what it actually is. And so we come to the point that when it comes to defining ourselves, we are content with only those little definitions of the things that we have done in the past and not really who we are at the moment. Now, of course, this is a very helpful thing to do because in the way we live, we want to have a sort of easy way, you know, a, a, a kind of takeout order for the different interactions that we have with people, with nature, with ourselves. And it's just easier to process this. This is why I say that humans have this capacity of sort of concentrating reality into small bits that can actually uh, define something that is ineffable. A tree is ineffable. Uh, a house as well. It's only when we create these concepts that have a sort of association with what we believe it is that it takes form. So coming to the self again, we know that we are not our name, we are not our titles, we are not what we did in the past, we are not anything that we can associate ourselves with. There's something greater going on. And the reason why we get caught up in this is because this is just a way for all the ideas that we have of everything to describe the things that we see and the things that we have. And it's sort of like, I call it the cloud of the mind. There's clouds around us that make us associate ourselves with it. And this is not who we are. There's something that is spontaneous coming out of us that is really who we are. But since, you see, since we can't really put a name on it, we can't really define what it is because it's flowing from that natural 
source of everything. And it's an it's a individual point in the rest of the fabric of reality. It becomes impossible to define. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, in consensual reality, we do have all these labels and names and titles and so on. That is fine because it helps us deal with a, like I said, the takeout, the fast food type of knowledge or understanding of reality. So we do, we can use that. You know, my name is Gabriel. Uh, I am from Spanish background. I have a house. I have a pet. All these things. But they are not defining the experience, which really is who we are. We are pure experience through consciousness. That is the nature of it. And all those are very helpful to define ourselves, to create ourselves in the structure. But then the problems come when we believe those definitions of ourselves. And we forget that we are simply a flowing consciousness perceiving experience and processing life as it is. Life is just this. This is life. Life has no definition. Life is just a flowing. And the real helpful and practical thing to take out of this, you can apply this to two crucial things, which you will see that everything that I'm saying fits perfectly into two things that permeate our spiritual uh, understanding, our spiritual evolution, our spiritual uh, journey, whatever you want to call it. It defines the ego as being that part of the understanding of the self as labels, identities, uh, ideas, concepts, uh, consensual, consensual reality in general. And then there is what we try to find in meditation, the point of consciousness that is not even thinking, it's not even associating anything, but simply experiencing. And this is why contemplation is such a powerful tool, just like meditation, is such a powerful tool because it distracts us from the distraction. So in other words, we clear out the clouds of ideas and concepts and definitions that we think we have of everything, anything, any single thought. And this is why the true mind is no mind. True mind is having no mind in the sense of conceptual reality as opposed to just simply experiencing and knowing that the truth lies in the unknown and not in the supposedly known. That is a very powerful way for you to start seeing yourself whenever an experience is exacerbating your anxiety, your problems, your ways of dealing with reality because you know that this is Maya. This is the illusion of reality that makes us believe in it. This is why we are always pushed by those who want to keep us away from seeing the internal self to believe in that. It's a projection of reality that can be manipulated because ideas, concepts, uh, definitions are always changing. Labels, titles, etc. All of that, names, numbering. Everything is always changing and the projection of it is distracting us from the only thing that exists, which is pure experience and pure consciousness. So from there, once you have this realization, you have woken up to the true reality of not the human being, not the planet, but the cosmos in general, which again, it's pure consciousness experiencing everything at the same time.